All right, so today we're gonna to be talking about enlarging to scale. So what I have here today is a little viewfinder. So a viewfinder is just a little window cut out into a piece of paper. Um, it can be any different size depending on the height or width that you want to do. Um, what I've got here is I'm actually going to be copying down, I'm gonna make a series of thumbnail drawings. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm actually gonna make them the same size as my thumbnail window in my viewfinder. And that will keep everything exactly the right proportion. And this will be a perfect size for my little thumbnail sketches of my still life, which is this um, beautiful, beautiful plant here today, my little friend. All right, so um, this is a very tall and narrow viewfinder. Um, the one I demoed in class was this one. Uh, this was a little bit more of a rectangle but I wanna show the more vertical one because with something that's so tall and skinny, the height to width ratio is more critical because it's very easy to scrunch and stretch. So with my viewfinder, I'm gonna look through my little window and close one eye. I'm gonna go ahead and draw out some elements within my viewfinder, right? So just kind of like sit yourself back, try to hold your hand steady and so these are little leaves. Turn that on there. All right. So whatever your still life ends up looking like, right? Looking through the viewfinder, there'll become a point where you want your still life to be made larger. Right, so you've got your sort of starting drawing. And this is fine as you're sort of playing things out, you know, maybe you make a number of different versions of this, each cropped all differently. Once you've decided that this is the one you want to make large, uh, we were to be making translating our small drawing onto a larger piece of paper. We still want it to be the same ratio, the same sort of skinny tall thing, even if I'm working on a different piece of paper, even when I'm doing it large. So this is my strategy for enlarging drawings that involves no math. This is no numbers are harmed using this technique. So what I've got here is I'm gonna use, basically either I could cut out my little thumbnail, that would be fine. Um, or I could trace out the shape of my thumbnail onto a piece of uh, tracing paper just to get a little copy of that rectangle. So if you're working from your sketchbook, you can translate any drawing on your sketchbook into a larger, more finished drawing um, that is the same ratio. Now, I specifically am using this piece of paper here today because it isn't a tall skinny, right? My, my drawing is actually gonna be kind of like here somehow, right? I'm gonna kind of fit it on the page and I'm gonna need to change the borders on one side. Um, so my strategy for doing this is to take my little, my viewfinder, because it happens to be the exact same size as my thumbnail. I'm gonna go ahead and line it up into the corner, okay? And I'm gonna connect, while holding it in the corner, I'm gonna connect the dots from one corner to the other corner. So just draw a line. And I'm using a really heavy pencil for this, just so it shows better on the camera. Um, if you were at home, I would recommend doing this with a sort of lighter uh, pencil that isn't so thick, but I want you guys to see what I'm doing. So after I've got this line down, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna continue the line. So I'm gonna kind of get it up on there. And then I'm gonna take my pencil and continue the line up to the top of the page. What this does now is that this intersection point is the information that I need, right? And so what happens now, I'm gonna drop a true vertical and so, that is made easier for me because I'm working on a, uh, a table with lines on it. But um, yeah, it helps. It helps that I have got a table with lines on it. Um, but if you are having trouble drawing a true vertical, you can always um, do a fold in your paper. My, paper, my um, pencil is so fat that I have to scooch the ruler a tiny bit away from the line to actually land it where I want it to be. It's fine. So this 
line drawing here is actually the size that I want for my, uh, my drawing. So what I'll do is I'm gonna go ahead and erase this diagonal. And um, I wanna draw in with a little border around it. Um, this does two things, it makes it look really finished, but also it like um, keeps the paint from getting on my table because I do wanna ink this drawing. So I'm using the width of my ruler as my border here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of erasing. You can kind of see how this is coming together. So now this rectangle that I've drawn on this piece of paper is exactly the same ratio as this thumbnail. So what that means now is when I go in and I can draw myself some, some clues to help me figure things out. So if I want to, I can mark the middle point on my thumbnail and I can mark the middle point on my drawing here. And this helps me figure out, all right, well, I'm looking at my thumbnail here. This curve is just above that middle point, you know? And so I can kind of copy, copy these elements from my thumbnail drawing. And this, this curve here is just below that middle point. So I, this is sort of tool, skillful means to help me translate this still life and this like little thumbnail into a larger composition, right? So here we go, I've got this big um, round leaf. And there's another one, so. Got a leaf up here. Good. And so these are just sort of a tool now. Now I don't have to worry that my drawing will get stretched or squished in any of the dimensions, it will actually translate from one to one. Um, this is for a negative space drawing. So if I was to go ahead with the negative space drawing, I might choose to shade in these areas here um, with ink. So thinking about where that area is behind the leaves. So for this particular assignment, you're drawing not the leaves themselves, but the space behind the leaves. But this strategy can be applied to any drawing Whenever you're enlarging something from a small drawing to a large drawing and you want those proportions to be the same and there's no math. So um, that is my uh, diagonals, using diagonals to enlarge drawings demo.